Today's episode of Quick Tick is brought to you by quicktickmcdick.ca. Check out our sweet new line of t-shirts if you're headed to the rodeo this weekend. Or maybe you're fixing some containment devices to keep your cattle in. We've got what you need. QuickDickMcDick.ca, proudly made in Canada and shipped from right here in Tufnell. Get your merch today. Quick Dick McDick coming to you from Saskatchewan here. You know, the Quick Dick channel is a variety channel. We do all kinds of things. We do politics, we do music videos, we do comedy, and sometimes we do cooking videos. And this week, we are going to do another episode of Cooking with Quick Dick, and we are going to be making Bannock Burgers. But of course, before we start cooking with Quick Dick, we are going to need some cooking music. Klaus, some cooking music, please. Let's roll. Okay, so I just woke up. Now before we go and get rolling for the day here, we're gonna get some burgers ready for tonight, all right? So get yourself a bowl. You're gonna need a big basket. So when I make burgers, I don't just make two. I make enough to last me a while. Now you're gonna wanna go to the fridge and get the beef out of the fridge that you pulled out of the freezer last night, right? Yes. And make sure when you select your beef that you're selecting beef that is grown right here in Saskatchewan. Okay, now these are two pounders each, so I'm putting four pounds of ground beef into this bowl, all right? So if you're gonna use like one pound, then you wanna cut this recipe in a quarter. If you're gonna use two pounds, cut it in a half. You know, math, math, math. Anyways, get them in the bowl. All right, we're gonna get the rest of our stuff together here. So you're gonna wanna grab four eggs. Now you wanna get farm eggs. If you don't have farm eggs, any eggs will work, but I'm lucky enough to have farm eggs because I got some pretty good dealers around here. Thanks, Warden and JMO. You get a little bit of turd on that one still. It'll be fine. Here's where the debate starts, all right? Now, I do a lot of controversial debatey stuff on this channel, all right? You know, there was a whole ZZ thing that started a fire on my last video. Uh, I've made videos where you make fence braces and everyone's like, no, you have to go straight across the top. No, you have to make a corner brace. But you know what? Just do what works for you. I'm showing you what I do, all right? I don't use breadcrumbs in my burgers. What I like to do is I use oats. Well, I put oats in the burgers because first of all, not only do we grow beef, but we grow oats. And secondly, those oats are gonna help keep some of that good beef fat in that burger and they won't let it drip down into your smoker. I wanna put all that beef fat in my belly. And I put them in one of these little things and you can put them in whole and do whatever you want, but I like to chew them up a little bit because they're gonna help hold your burger together. Not too crazy, don't get crazy with them here. Like that's kind of what you're looking for. Just chewed up. There's a few whole ones. Some are chewed up a little bit. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be great. Quarter of a cup of ketchup. Make sure your ketchup is made from Canadian tomatoes and it's got some French on it. Quarter of a cup of what? Worcest Worcestershire. Okay, this is where everybody gets down in the comments and they're like, "Wash your sister." <laughs> I know it's it's Worcester, whatever you want to call it. Liam Perrins, and you know what I'm talking about, okay? Quarter of a cup. Did you just beep the F word out of that? Yes, because sometimes parents want to watch this stuff with their kids, and mom gets really mad when we say that word too many times. Okay, okay, good point. Get a cup of milk together. I'm gonna head on over to the spice cabinet here. I'm gonna get some damn good smoked garlic powder from right out of Kelvington, Saskatchewan. And out of Regina, Saskatchewan, I've got some burnt canoe. Now this stuff's basically just steak spice, but it is a really good steak spice and it's made here in Saskatchewan. So that's what we're gonna use. Links to this stuff are in the description of the video. Here comes the fun part. Get her all in there and get your hands dirty. Get her all mixed up nice here. Don't mess around here. Get your hands dirty, people. Okay, now I like to pat her down a little bit here. We're gonna stuff this back in the fridge. We're gonna let it set up for about 20 minutes. Shout. Shout. 
Oh yeah, that smells good. Okay, now I'm a stickler for shape and size, so get your fancy burger press or do them by hand or do whatever you want. Now, I'm working with limited space here, so you're gonna take your popcorn pot off of the burner that's missing on the old General Motors Frigidaire stove here, okay? And we're gonna put a cookie sheet here and we're gonna put parchment paper on top of the cookie sheet, okay? There, that was easy, right? Back to the burger press. Now, because I am OCD with some things, I make exactly 10 ounce burger patties. It's just what I do. You make them as big as you want. When I eat, I wanna eat 10 ounces of beef with one burger. Then I take that sucker and I just like make it into kind of a little ball. It's like that, all right? Look at what we got going on here, okay? Nice, it's handleable, it doesn't really stick to your hands. This is what we want. Okay, then it's super easy. You just put this sucker like a ball in your press, put it on like that and give her the old squeeze. Tighten her all up. Nice little squeeze. We're ready to go onto the parchment paper. So give her the old lift, and then you just give her the old She drops right out. Okay, now don't mess around here. Get your shape right. You want to touch up these edges a little bit. You gotta make it pretty. Okay, there. Look how beautiful that is. That's gonna be real nice on the grill, real nice. Okay, we're gonna wanna do this until we're out of beef. Have some fun with this. We're, we're cooking here, people. Yes, we're juggling meat right now. <laughs> Look at those bastards. Okay, smoker, 200. Um, make sure to close that bastard. The house is gonna fill up with smoke and we'll get that hail damage fixed at some point in time. I don't know when. Okay, but while this bastard's heating up, little trick I'll show you here. Oh, left that guy in there last time. Let's get that out of there. You wanna grab this top rack off your smoker and take it inside. So bring it in, set it over top of your absolute disaster of a sink and counter and you get a little bit of product of Canada canola oil. Obviously, because we grow canola out here too, eh? Put a little bit of her on some paper towel. Just oil that sucker up nice. And then you just put her over top of your burgers that you so meticulously place down on your parchment paper and give her the old like that. Oh, wasn't that easy? Then you gotta put those three bastards on there very carefully, right? Because numbers and the whole thing. And I, I did forget to close that window actually when I got going, so the whole house smells like smoke. Wonder why nobody comes and visits me. So you just bring these suckers out, chuck them on top of the old smoker. There we go. Okay, now we're at 200, but we're gonna bring this down to smoke boost because we want a lot of smoke in this meat. We want that flavor in there, in the meat, not in the house. Because I'm all tacky, I'm gonna go stick this in the burgers. It's remotely connected to my phone so I can watch the temperature of these things and I'm actually gonna go get some other stuff done and we're gonna come back when those suckers are done smoking. Saskatchewan alert. We are gonna add a little bit of, I gotta go to Saskatoon for parts barbecue sauce to these things, all right? Now, this is basically in the roux barbecue sauce where I make it in this video right here. If you click on it, I think there's some gun stuff and I make some pulled venison and whatnot or whatever, but it shows you how to make barbecue sauce using rhubarb. If you replace that rhubarb with Saskatoon's, you get, I gotta go to Saskatoon for parts barbecue sauce. We're gonna go put that on the burgers. They're at about 145 right now. Look at this stuff, a little bit of Saskatoon berry in there. Look at these burgers. Look at, oh, a little smoky here. Got that little guy there, cause that was left over when I was cleaning out the press. You can't waste it. Look at these things. Those are gonna be good. Look, starting to sweat a little bit. Them oats are holding a lot of the fat in those burgers. This is gonna be great. Okay, just give them a little coat on all of them, then close the lid back up. Hey, look, these things are at 155 right now, so we're gonna grab our cookie sheet that we washed, right? And we're gonna go pull them off the grill. And you're like, quick, Dick, why are you pulling them at 155? We should go to 165. We're pulling them at 155, we're gonna cover them and rest them. Look at these beauties. Oh yeah, okay, let's pull them. Okay, now make sure your foil is from Canada and not made in China. Okay, we're gonna throw those suckers in the oven, let them rest. Okay, I'm going to Sheho because it's the Sheho Rodeo this weekend and I'm gonna go announce for Jim Canna and then <laughs> go on the ranch rodeo tomorrow, so that ought to be interesting. But anyways, we're gonna pick this back up tonight.
Okay, I just got back from Shio. It's super late, but I'm gonna show you why I like Bannock, because I'm starving. It's like quarter after 10. And the reason that I like Bannock so much is because it's simple to make, it's four ingredients. Let's go get yourself a bowl. Get that smoker rolling at 375. Three cups of flour, and of course, Canadian wheat, Canadian flour. Don't mess around here, people. Two tablespoons of bacon powder. Like a teaspoon of salt, but I mean, you can just ballpark it. It doesn't have to be fancy here. Oh, shit. Well, I guess it's gonna be some salty bannock. Whatever. Okay, stir up your extra salty dry mixture here. Don't worry, that's all not. It's gonna come out in the wash here. We're not gonna have an issue with that stuff. Hey, listen, okay. I'm cheating here, all right? So I've got the butter that's already got the garlic in it from the store. Make sure it's Saskatchewan produced butter and I'm just gonna throw it in a bowl here and we're gonna toss her in the microwave and melt a quarter of a cup of butter. Now, melting butter is really easy because you just put it next to the microwave and then you just, it's, it's just that easy, that's how it works. Okay, now super easy, butter. In she goes. Then get one of these bastards, and we're gonna go half and half. So I go three quarters of a cup of water, like so. Three quarters of a cup of milk, nothing to it. Okay, now we're gonna mix it. See how this is, see how this is coming together? We don't wanna mess around here with it too much, because if you handle it too much, then it's gonna get flaky and blah, blah, blah. So we're gonna stop her here, and we're gonna get our hands in this. I can't remember if I washed my hands or not. Anyways, it doesn't matter. Okay, now see, we're not really sticking to our hands, so we don't want to get too crazy with it. We're gonna bring this out of the bowl, get everything down off the sides. Before we chuck it on the counter, I'm just gonna grab a tiny little bit of flour and give her the old, we're just gonna, just knead it a couple of times, but like I said, don't get too carried away with this stuff. Oh, look at that salt in there. Okay, this is about where we want it. This is getting, we don't want to get it too dry, all right? Okay, so like you see how easy this stuff is to handle. You just roll her all up. You don't gotta be gentle with it. You don't gotta be anything. Let's get her all rolled up. We're gonna make six even balls with it here, okay? And then all you do with this stuff, is spread her on out, just like this, okay? And then you take your bowl. And just press them down. Now don't worry, you think these are too flat, but they're not. We got a lot of baking powder in these things. So we're gonna flatten them out. And when we get these things out on the smoker, they're gonna jump up and they're gonna be tall and huge. And our burgers are gonna fit just nicely inside of these bad boys. These are looking good. Let's grease up our cast iron skillets. Grease skillets, we've got our bannock buns are in there. They're going out onto the smoker at 375. Now listen, my light out on the deck is burnt out. So we're gonna switch over to headlamp cooking here. But what we're gonna do, so as you can see here, uh, this would not fit on the top rack of the smoker. So we'll put that on later. I got four in there right now, the big cast iron. We're gonna melt a little bit more butter and we're just gonna go paint it over the top of those buns. So I go to grab this out of the microwave, which you can see is very clean. That's how I like to keep it. And I like almost burnt my fingers. But what I've done is I have got my own limited edition Quick Dick McDick grilling gloves so that you don't get burnt. Made in Canada. And you can just grab this and we're gonna take it out to the grill. What did I tell you? Look at these things, they're starting to pop already. So we're just gonna put a little bit of butter on the top of them. Here we go. It's gonna be some tricky cinematography work with the whole headlight. Oh yes. Look how they're starting to rise for us already. These are gonna be good. That's all there is to this, guys. Then just close the lid, leave them as is. Don't forget to take that out of there. That'll be an ugly little fire on the go. Okay, so we just wanna have a quick look. We'll see how they're browning up. Okay, let's give them a flip and then we're gonna butter them again. Oh, yes. Okay, while these finish up, we're gonna go grab a couple of burgers and throw, actually just one burger, because I'm only gonna eat one tonight. So we're gonna throw one down there and get it touched up on the grill. Bannock rolling. Let's get that sucker rolling. Oh, this is gonna be good, you guys. Okay, now obviously I've got enough burgers to feed an army here, right? Well, maybe like a canadian size army. So I'm gonna keep one out in a container in the fridge for supper tomorrow night, and the rest of them, I'm just gonna package them individually, throw them in the freezer, and you can literally just pull them out of the freezer, throw them on the grill, they're ready in minutes, and you can just eat these things forever. 
Okay, maybe not forever, but I mean for a few days anyways, and then you can switch over to steak. Anyways, back to the grill. Let's check on that burger and bannock. Give that sucker a flip. Oh, look at that. It's gonna be perfect. We're almost ready here. Let's check them out. Oh, see, we're getting there. We're just gonna let them brown up just a little bit farther. Yeah. We're almost there, you guys. Okay, you guys, bannock's ready to go. So I'm gonna pull that, and when I go out there, I'm gonna put this slice of jalapeno jack product of Canada cheese onto that burger. Shut down the grill, we're gonna bring the bannock in here, get our bun ready to go. Oh yes, look at these things, look at them. Oh yes, here we are. Look at this sucker, oh this is gonna be perfect. Okay, we're gonna slice that open. Oh, do you hear that? Crispy on the outside, soft and beautiful and gooey on the inside like bannock is supposed to be. Oh, this is gonna be good. Little shot of mustard that we are professionals on producing right here in Saskatchewan. I'm gonna give just a tiny little bit more of, I gotta go to Saskatoon for parts, barbecue sauce. Tiny little shot of ketchup. Now you could do whatever you want. You could put pickles, you could put onions, you could put lettuce on it, you do whatever you want. But I just like beef. This is how Quick Tech does it. This is Quick Tech McDick signing off, reminding you, if you want the calories in your day to take you just a little bit further, come on and cook with Quick Tech and make yourself a Bannock burger with Saskatchewan beef. Catch you next time. QuickTechMcDick.ca. We don't often self-promote, but when we do, well, we do.